Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. What's going on guys? It's Paul and I'm bringing you a tournament report today for uh, France and Italy. Uh, their Masters tournaments just rolled up uh, in in Europe this past weekend. Uh, France occurred uh, not this past weekend, but a weekend before this one, and we just recently got that information, so I'm giving it to you this week. And of course, Italy is also uh, finished up. Um, France, of course, was a New Frontiers tournament, and Italy was a uh, cluster-only tournament, so there's going to be a little bit of a difference in the deck lists. Um, but there's one thing I want to talk about first, and that's because we got a little bit of news last night. So you're going to see uh, two stacks of cards here. Uh, the cards on the left here are the changes to the New Frontiers ban list going forward, and the pile of cards on the right are all the cards now banned in Wanderer going forward. Um, considering that most of the events across the world are finished except for Worlds, they're kind of getting a head start on the, uh, the banning season. Uh, Scheherazade is gone. Um, so all of you who do not like Scheherazade, uh, she's gone. So you don't have to worry about her anymore. Of course, we get Evil Ginny back, uh, Eva, and Ruin Story. I think Ruin Story is the most significant card to come off this ban list and will definitely shape um, how guild decks are um, going forward as well as any other green decks that are able to splash black going into uh, New Valhalla. So seeing Ruin Story, um, knowing that we have Fox and Wanderer, this card is going to be very good for that. Um, if you want to move around uh, different cards to play Ruin Story and Wanderer, this card has been available for a while, but it's new uh, again in New Frontiers. And then of course uh, Lumia with the new Enter uh, keyword changes that have been made as a result of uh, New Valhalla coming into, into existence. Uh, Lumia has been banned as a result of her being able to just spam the heck out of Enter effects. Enter effects are by far um, some of the best effects in the entire game, and the idea that she just gets to use all of them multiple times, she kind of breaks things down. Uh, play Dead is banned because Kyrick, uh, Red Kyrick in in Wanderer was ridiculous with the ability to bring back uh, Cthugas and um, Rug Eggs and things like that. And of course, uh, there was a combo with Interdimensional Vessel Apollo, so we're, we're seeing a Regalia banned. Um, in addition to that, it was just a really really decent regalia, being able to just save something uh, for, for no cost, other than, you know, you just lose this card and gave your J-Ruler flying, which is sometimes relevant, but if you're interested in using any of these cards, uh, of course they're still usable in Epic Stories and Genesis format. So uh, this is the changes that we're going to be seeing going forward. These changes um, do affect a few things in the New Frontiers meta as I'm predicting it going forward, but we're going to save that for the thoughts section. Alright, so before we get into the French Masters deck list today, I just want to give a special thanks to Sergei Bouvard who was able to provide me this information on the French uh, Force of Will group. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, this video is uh, partially able to be done because of you, so I appreciate it. Uh, Sergei, thank you again. Um, as well as uh, just the simple fact that I don't have a lot of time right now because I'm preparing for a, uh, a pretty large uh, training opportunity across the country where I'm at. So I am uh, kind of constrained for time. That being said, I cut a few lists from uh, the French Masters. Uh, I kind of just went with the list that I thought would be the most interesting to talk about. Um, that is definitely not me uh, having any disrespect or trying to be a poor sportsman to any of the people who did um, get into the top eight. Congratulations to all of them. Um, just for the sake of time, I have limited the number of lists that we're talking about. Um, so that with that in mind, let's get into the first list. So first up, we have uh, Samuel Doe, who got first place with their Lumia list. Uh, congratulations. Uh, this is pretty much uh, the only last, the only time, the last time. Uh, that you were probably going to see uh, Lumia, unfortunately, and that's because she's being banned in Wanderer. Um, but we just talked about that, so we don't need to really talk about it that much more. Um, this is a pretty standard uh, Lumia shell. Um, you can flex the number of Tamas and Birds and Sacred Elves and Melfies that you want to use, uh, but generally speaking, you play Blazer, uh, Prissia, Rachel, and of course, City with some, uh, some different cards as well. Um, Lorite for support and final battle, as well as a, a rapid growth to escape your opponent's final battles. But the two cards that we haven't talked about yet are the Manticore, which is basically Blazer, but it can also destroy additions and it can fly in for 9 damage. And that's 
pretty relevant, um, all things considered. And then, of course, Valentina, being able to uh, flicker Valentina and uh, remove stuff from your opponent's field and then using her effect to uh, recycle those resonators to the bottom of the deck in order to deal massive damage, that's actually pretty relevant. Um, so it's not a surprise that this list uh, definitely got into the top eight, but it's really cool that it actually won the whole French Master. So congratulations to Samuel Doe. Next up, I want to talk about uh, Claire Dupre's uh, second place IU list. Uh, the thing about IU that you always got to keep in mind is that it's generally um, just a bunch of souls um, that she can run, a couple of win conditions and resuscitating will, uh, roar of time, um, dragon lord's breath is just a general removal spell, but for the most part it's just a way of uh, OTKing your opponent. And this list is focusing a little bit more uh, heavily on the aggression, considering it's running a lot more souls than it normally would run. Um, and it's definitely less mid-rangey because you have things like Freyla as a way of dealing a bunch of damage. However, um, if Claire decided to you know, put on the brakes, there are cards such as Ray the Black Owl, Dark Bokuro, Shabu Jing, and uh, Machina as a way of slowing down, um, playing a more control style game, and uh, utilizing things like I use Sword to destroy Resonators, Final Battle to wipe their board, uh, Shayla's return to keep them from playing things and stealing tempo. Um, of course, M Miracle Millennium Medicine. That's not Miracle Millennium Medicine, medicine but it's I use Power Medicine. Um, and uh, Life Stealing Altar as well are all really good ways for IU to just continue to gain advantage by just playing a bunch of one ofs in her deck. Um, so I think it's pretty cool that uh, we, we see so much variation in IU. Um, there are a lot of different ways to play her, and uh, the side deck is pretty standard for this play style, uh, citing things like the Lightning Cave for um, if you are playing against something like Kyrick and you need to cite something in to slow them down, you can side into a more control-heavy package for that. Um, but other than that, uh, this is basically... Um, IU does what she does with a little bit of variation with every deck, but uh, congratulations to second place player uh, Claire Dupre for getting second place. Next up we have uh, third place Amaric Gutenyo who got third place with their Lumia variation, and the difference here is that they're actually playing a Feili Umir combo um, in addition to uh, the normal Blazer. Uh, city package. Um, there's not so much I want to talk about here. We've seen decks like this in the past, but um, being able to just splash two engines like this into one deck, I always thought was kind of interesting. Never had, um, never had the opportunity to do it myself. But the fact that they get to run a Beelzebub and flicker it, and you know, just get rid of things in your opponent's side of the field in games two and three is pretty cool. As well as uh, just being able to side this whole package out for you know, like this five nine cards. Not a lot of cards to side out, and you can transformationally side into something that's a little bit more um, advantageous for you depending on your matchups. Um, Amaric, if you're there, uh, let us know what your thoughts were and what your siding choices were when you uh, played this deck and piloted it. Um, it's really interesting for me to hear back about what exactly players' uh, mindsets were when they actually played decks that are very unique and very different. Um, so yeah, that'd be kind of cool if you're there. If you're not, I'm just talking into the wind, but whatever. Um, congratulations anyway to uh, third place Amaric for uh, for getting third place. Next up, we have seventh place uh, Sasha Sandoz, who got um, seventh place with their Kyrick list. Um, and this is probably the last time you'll see a green Kyrick list. Um, mostly that's because we're losing things like uh, Blasting Waves and... Uh, uh, Memory of Reincarnation, as well as all the countdown stones. Uh, the only color Kyrick is going to be able to play here on out if it wants to splash the second color, it's going to be black. So all of these cards, uh, for the most part, like Fair's Spell and uh, Viola, Treacherous Maiden, Lorite, all of those are going to be relegated back to um, their own green lists for the most part. The one card I did want to talk about here, which I think is kind of interesting, and this might be relevant to uh, cluster-only decks or the new frontiers involving New Valhalla going forward, is Bad Cooking. Now this card, um, and you're going to see it on your screen right here, it gives plus four, minus four to a resonator that you control. 
but if you um, had control a uh, if you control a dragonoid and you uh, cast this card on that dragonoid, you get plus four plus four instead. And then of course you put uh, three strength counters on your J ruler. So what this deck, especially with things like food supply, the deck is you know pretty liberally using its uh, strength counters to gain additional effects, and it's also playing more of a mid range package with uh, the dragon of Mount Hoel, um, which I think is really interesting. And it's definitely a different way of playing Kyrick, and uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with this list. Um, I think it's very different, and I, I like seeing variation in you know tier one decks like Kyrick. So, congratulations to Sasha for getting seventh place. All right, well, we do have a, a ruler breakdown for the Italian Masters that was uh, Rea Cluster only. And just before we get started, of course, special thanks to uh, Giorgio uh, Bucco and Stephanie Shaw for compiling all this um, all this information together. Uh, Giorgio uh, works for um, the Italian side of, of tournament organizing, so the congratulations to them for uh, for having that opportunity and for compiling all of this information. And of course, thanks again to Stephanie Shaw for bringing us all together on the US group. Makes my job a lot easier, so I appreciate it, guys. So the ruler breakdown for uh, the Italian Masters in Bologna. There were 22 Sherry's, uh, 16 Time Spinning Witch, 11 Gills, 8 Tagris, 6 Kyrick, two each of Imol and Ferrer, and one each of Ayu and Rhea. And that's pretty much everything. Uh, of course, we're going to see a huge chunk of, of this tournament not being able to play Scheherazade anymore. Um, what's interesting to me is that more and more players are not playing Gil. Um, I think Gil is probably a much uh, stronger J ruler than Scheherazade, but um, of course the idea of probably opening up with five additional cards in hand is tempting to a lot of different players. And of course uh, we are going to see what this looks like in the top eight deck list breakdown. Um, so again, just, uh, just a quick heads up, I uh, don't have a lot of time right now, so I tried to whittle down the list to the list that I thought people would want to see the most, or the list that I thought that were the most interesting. Um, special thanks again to Giorgio Bucco and Force of Will Italy for compiling these lists and listing them on their website. Um, as always, links to this uh, stuff for uh, France and for Italy and as well as the new ban list and any of the new spoilers if you haven't seen those i've included those down below as well in the description so if you're interested in those uh take a look down in the description and uh, all the lists you would want uh if they're not in the video they're definitely in the link so check those out so first up we have the winner of the italian masters frederico sopini uh piloting gill he's been piloting uh gill for a long time now especially since uh gp rome i don't know if there was anything um, he was running before that. I believe this, that was the first cluster event of their of their meta game. I don't know. Um, at this point, <laughs> I haven't really checked on that. But he has been playing Gil for a really long time, so uh, it doesn't surprise to see uh, for me to see him in the top cut. Um, he definitely knows how to play, pilot this deck very well. He has additional draw power in uh, in the deck, and of course. He has the ability of flexing Arrival of the Hero. Arrival of the Hero is pretty solid, especially for um, a chant that you can cast for, for zero if you have a, a Jade Ruler. Um, Barrier on Gil has always been relevant. Um, and what else can I say? Uh, Gil is Gil. Uh, the ability to just get a whole bunch of elementals in hand and use fifth element to just destroy anything your opponent has that's blocking your way is, is pretty great. So other than that, I uh, don't have much more to say, but congratulations to uh, Frederica Zopini for uh, getting the first place finish here. Next up, we have second place uh, Campania Alessio, who got second place with their uh, Time Spinning Witch list. Uh, one of the cool things that I saw in this list is running the City of Ataractia as a way of uh, giving your things like... Uh, Mosasaurus, if you had to hard cast it from hand, giving it swiftness, uh, giving your uh, your dragon spirit swiftness, or even giving your disciples swiftness, uh, if you don't have a lorite, so you're able to enter with swiftness, have it have flying or drain or the plus two plus two, um, and do some additional damage, which I think is pretty cool. It also allows you to uh, more easily play dragon rider if you do bring it. Or sorry, excuse me, dino rider. It allows you to bring that in and have a little bit more of an easy time uh, playing it which I think is pretty relevant. All in all, I think we're going to see more time spinning witch going forward, especially if more players get uh, their hands on it. I'm not sure when the company is going to be distributing this at a, at a wider um, at a wider distribution, but hopefully we get it soon. I think more, more and more players are going to want to play this, uh, this ruler. 
Um, and it's obvious to see why. Uh, this deck is really, really powerful with the ability to freeze your opponent's recovery phase and to stop them from playing additional stones. So um, it's also one of those rulers that is um, able to play the idols very comfortably. So it's a, it's a great ruler for that as well. Other than that, uh, congratulations to second place uh, Campania Alessio for getting this uh, top two finish. Next up, we have uh, Alessandro Rossini, who got top eight with their uh, Tagris list. And I mostly wanted to take a look at this list again because we haven't seen Tagris top in Europe in a little bit, uh, mostly because uh, Kyrick has been a ruler um, and has been taking uh, some of the spots that uh, Tagris normally takes up. But this is basically just like a mid-range aggro um, light list, very similar to what I think we're going to see out of Brunhild going forward. Um, whether or not you play this ruler or Brunhild going forward is going to depending uh, depending on what if you want to run runes or not, uh, that sort of thing. But I think as we see more humans and Valkyries going forward, that might be something that uh, makes a little bit more sense than Tagris. But as you can see, the deck is really well self-contained. Um, there are ton, tons and tons of pandas that you're able to run, especially if you want to run things like Flourishing Hope. You have the ability to flip Tagris, um, invert your um, your inverse stone here, and uh, be able to wipe your opponent's board before you swing in for game, which I think is pretty pretty awesome. Other than that, this is a pretty standard for pandas. You play for the gem, man, uh, gem mallet panda, Orphica's cistern as a quick cast panda that comes in and uh, you know gives you a a light gem for that. Uh, Garnet for additional room, uh, not room production, but gem production, um, etc. I mean, there's so much going on in this list, uh, it, but it's all aggro based. So uh, take a good look, and if you need to, of course, the link is down in the description below. These are pandas, and pandas are actually pretty good going forward. They're just not super good in New Frontiers right now. But anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick look at Alessandro Rossini's list. Congratulations for getting top eight. All right, and now we're at my favorite part of all of these videos where I get to sit down and uh, kind of give you some of my thoughts after seeing all these different lists. And of course, the way I think about it is uh, I'm thinking mostly about Rhea Cluster and how it's solidified. Considering that Scheherazade is now completely banned and out of the meta, the top two rulers that I see, the tier one rulers that I see going forward are uh, Gil and Time Spinning Witch, with Gil being just a little bit higher um, on that. Mostly not because the, you know, they both have barrier, um, they both have considerable damage to offer, with Time Spinning Witch being just a little bit lower in the attack stat, and Gil just being a little bit higher in that attack stat. Um, they, they both produce will, that's all well and good. But the thing that Gil has over uh, the Time Spinning Witch is that he has the ability to search out cards from his deck by just recycling things back into it. And that's really, really good. Um, I'm really glad that Gil is shining. I think he's actually a pretty decent ruler. Um, and I'm glad that he's one of the, start the structure deck rulers that has actually made it this far and has developed into... Uh, one of the top tier rulers of the entire format. Of course, uh, the tier one is also made up for the decks that, uh, you know, challenge these decks on a regular basis, those being Tagris, IU, and Kyrick. These are notably, uh, all three are aggro rulers. Um, so these, these decks in general are always going to challenge these more control style rulers, which is very different for me to say. Uh, aggro is typically not the anti-meta. <laughs> That's really strange. Um, but for the most part, uh, these are the rules you want to run if you want to beat these two. Um, you may or may not win an entire tournament with these going forward, but they are definitely options if you don't want to play these two rulers. And then of course, I um, I now include Imol in the top, um, the top tier list. Um, to be looking into, mostly because with the introduction to the new spoilers, which are linked down below, the entire set has been spoiled so far for uh, New Dawn Rises. Check that out. Um, Imol actually gains a really strong mana dork in that um, she's always been able to uh, unrest um, different mana dorks for the, for the sake of them producing additional will. That She's a really powerful J ruler. Inverse cards are definitely not bad. Um, by any stretch of the imagination, Flourishing Hope, um, the Light Palace, uh, more specifically the Inverse Stone, Mephistopheles, uh, the new Grim. all of these cards are really, really good, um, but she never really had what she needed to go um, 
to go all out, and I think the Mana Dork might make all the difference for her, especially with um, some of the new light support that we're seeing as well going forward. There's some good stuff, and so this to me is the meta. Um, the rulers that we're going to be using the most going forward from Rhea Cluster, um, and it's pretty cool. There's a good wide distribution of rulers to use in addition to the new rulers coming out in New Valhalla. Um, and with that, I think that's all I got to say on this. Um, I'm still, I have a lot of ideas for what cards in New Valhalla are really good. That might be a video for another time, considering that we have like a lot of time in between um, these Masters tournaments and Worlds. There might be an opportunity for me to do a video where I sort of look over some of the cards that I'm really interested in using in the new cluster. If you're interested in that, uh, let us know down below in the comment section. I wouldn't mind doing a video like that. Um, yeah, you just gotta let me know. Other than that, uh, what's your favorite card of the new spoilers that you've seen so far? If you haven't seen the spoilers again, uh, the link to the Forcible database will be down below where they've spoiled everything for us. Um, they've got it all lined up really well um, and they have a really nice uh, convenient search system that you can use to, to get around and look at the new spoilers. Um, I gotta say for me, it's probably the new Blue Lance a lot. And if you haven't seen that card yet, I'll try and put it on screen, but that card is just really, really, really cool. Um, it's a really good self-contained system, gives plus one, plus one counters to all of your machines when it enters, and then you can remove um, plus one, plus one counters to do a whole bunch of damage to your opponent's board by removing all the resonators. Um, as soon as you get ten plus one, plus one counters, it's great. Uh, you just get to blow up your opponent's board. That and the art is sick as heck. Uh, I love this art, it's really, really cool. Um, man, Lancelot. Anyway, <laughs> I'll stop talking Lancelot so that you can tell me down in the comment section down below uh, what your favorite card of the new spoilers is. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe uh, for more Ruler School content like this. Uh, of course, check out the ways you can help support the channel down in the, down in the description below. And uh, while you're down there, uh, check out the links if you want additional deck lists. If you want uh, other tournament reports for stuff in this meta going forward right before Worlds happens, um, I've got other videos in the past that are just like this one. So yeah, other than that guys, it's been good talking to you and I'll see you next time. Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support, enjoy the video.